All right, nieces and nephews, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I have a feeling that this yellow shirt is going to be featured quite prominently uh, for a few videos here. We are back with the banana hammock, the tennis ball neon tropical glitz. We've got quite a bit of work to do. And after about a week and a half, I finally think I have all of the parts that I need. Um, I have tomorrow off, tomorrow's my birthday actually. Today's Monday, the 27th of May, the year of our Lord, 2024. Uh, but there's a couple things that I want to do. First, um, what, one of the things that I noticed that uh, over the past week that I didn't notice when I first got the, um, uh, the bike home is that the axle is actually in backward. And I wasn't sure uh, how important that was until I started doing some uh, ye old internet research. And uh, I learned that uh, axle bolts go in from the right because the rotation of the wheel uh, helps make sure that it, it doesn't loosen. Does that makes sense. So uh, with the with this axle bolt coming in from the left, if there's any friction, it's going to loosen that bolt just a little bit. And there was no cotter pin in the castle nut, so I'm going to knock that out with the help of uh, Bo Mama here, and uh, we're going to get that axle turned back around. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. And then I want to line up that chain while she's here too. So without further ado, let's get started. Hey, nieces and nephews, we're going to get right back to the video. But first I wanted to talk a little bit about my new partnership with First MFG. If you're anything like me, you're scrolling through social media on a daily basis. And because we all like motorcycles, we're going to see a lot of motorcycle ads come through. One that always caught my eye was anytime First MFG came up, I always considered them like the premier in motorcycle riding or fashion apparel. I know many other fellow YouTubers and other riders who swear by First MFG ride with that gear. So finally, we pulled the trigger and we got this upside club style leather vest from First MFG. If you've been around a while, you know that I've always worn vests in my videos for various reasons, most of which is for storage capacity. We're gonna talk about that in just a second. I've had many denim leather vests. Most of the time, the leather vests that I get, they're stiff as soon as you get them, and it takes a little while before they break in. It's kind of an annoyance. You can do some steps to make them softer right out of the box with different uh, leather treatment, saddle soaps, etc. But this one, nah, man. It's quality leather and it's soft right out of the gate. For me on this upside club style leather vest, I chose the red stitching because it matches the Swamp King, it matches my helmet a little bit. And I chose the upside, it is a little bit shorter than the other vest. That allows for a more comfortable riding position so the leather's not bunched up on, on your waistline. The zipper is a little bit higher than some of the other vests. Again, that allows for a more comfortable riding position. Let's talk a little bit about all the storage that's on these vests. It's amazing how this piece of leather can house so many things. You've got external pockets up here on the chest. You've got side external pockets. You've got concealed carry pockets on both sides of the vest. The left side, once your vest is zipped, you still have access to that quick conceal carry pocket. You've got another pocket on the inside that's designated as a phone pocket, but I found that it also fits my case for my glasses, so I can slide that in there instead of worry about putting that stuff in my bag. With this partnership, if you use my code UNCLEBOGATOR at checkout or use a dedicated link that I'll have down in the description and in the pinned comment, you'll get 25% off your entire order. That's a big discount. A lot of discounts out there for promos are 15%, 10%. This was 25%. And you're not limited to the upside vest. You're not limited to the red stitching. You want a downside vest? You want a jacket? You want some gloves, some fashion apparel, some riding pants? It's all there. Now let's get on back to the regular video and we'll see you in the swamp. All right, first things first, we're gonna get this thing up on this jack. Here we go. One thing I gotta be careful of um, I am going to change the um, oil pan probably tomorrow, but the oil pan does come down a little bit. I don't want to be uh, resting the motorcycle on that. So we're going to break torque on this thing. I don't even know if it is torque or not. We're going to find out. No, that, so this is supposed to be 60, between 60 and 65 foot pounds. And uh, I just broke that thing with ease. So it's it's no wonder that, you know, this shit was all loose. All right, we're gonna knock this out. There is a spacer there. 
All right, boys, well, the camera died, but your old uncle, you guys know me, man. There's not a project that I can't mess up. So I had a little trouble getting this axle out and we finally got it, got it put on, but I uh, forgot to grease it. I didn't go buy grease. I asked one of the techs today for a little spoonful of grease. So I got that in this uh, cup over here. Yeah, a little axle grease here. I got most of the glob down the bottom of that cup. All right, now I've got this spacer over here. I gotta make sure I line up. Now we're not gonna torque this yet because I still gotta do a um, chain alignment. All right, I bought this paddock stand. It says it's uh, rated for 950 pounds. All right, hold it straight up. go baby all right i like to use paddock stands and the reason i didn't use it to do the wheel was because i wanted it i didn't have to move the wheel so much all right chain adjustment time which um, i've done these before on the royal enfield and the um, triumph that's going to be way too big i can tell you that right now i'm only looking for about an inch to an inch and a half. So I think I'll be satisfied with an inch and three quarters. So I'm gonna put it to where, I'm gonna bring the bottom down to this five. There we go. Okay, we got almost two inches of play here. Okay, two inches of play, that's way too much. But I need to measure. There's these little holes on the swing arm. I am, man, this is not a very precise measurement two and a quarter on this side, two and a half on this side. All right, so I can bring I can bring this one in a little bit. You guys know I use uh, software to uh, filter out background noise. I got Skinner playing in the background. I hope you guys didn't expect anything different. All right, let's measure that one. Okay, bottom's on the five. It's right at it, right at an inch and a half. All right, let's spin it. Bottom's at the five. And we are at four and a quarter. I'm happy with that. Now we gotta measure these holes again. All right, I gotta bring this side in. It's a quarter inch off. All right, what the book says to do is to torque this thing to 60 foot pounds. And if you can line up a cotter pin, do it. If not, tighten it till you can. But you're not supposed to go past 65. It seems like a very good enough approach in terms of what an official manual would say, you know? I'm gonna feel a lot better with this thing torqued right. And wouldn't you know, I can't get it past there. All right, it says you're not supposed to exceed 65 foot-pounds, but honestly, let me say, guys. Yeah, it says don't exceed 65 foot-pounds. I don't know how I'm going to get that uh, all the way around to the next castle hole there without going five more foot pounds. That, that seems like a lot of turn, but that's what the book says. So we're going to do it. All right. So while I've got this thing up on the paddock stand, we're going to go in and adjust, check the adjustment on the um, primary chain. I've never done that before. So um, just like a lot of things on this bike, we're learning some new stuff. Now, obviously, I have looked up how to do it, so I'm not going in completely blind, but um, experience is the best teacher. I don't need you right now. I'm, <laughs> I mean, if you want to hang out over here, that's fine. I just didn't know. You guys heard that? I told Bo Mom I didn't need her. I want to tell you something. I always need her. I hope somebody didn't gorilla torque these before. Oh God. Let's try to clean out, see if there's any bullshit in here. All right, please Lord Jesus. Okay, there's one. I'm gonna use this hammer to make sure it's seated in there. There we go. There we go. All right, we got them all busted loose. All these T27s and T25s on this bike always worry that 
I just assume they're gonna be stripped out. Okay, boys. All right, we got her off. Uh, I turned the camera off because I didn't want you guys to witness the uh, monstrosity that I had to commit to get that down. There's still room to adjust this thing if I need to. Thank goodness for that. So what I've seen to do, this thing needs uh, 5 8 to 7 8 worth of play. I know there's a tool out there or a tool that you can make to um, kind of test this thing. I want to see this chain. Well, the tensioner looks good down there. That's good. All right, let me see what I'm playing with here. All right, we're right in the middle. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I wish I had the right tool, that's for damn sure. What I need is a tool that goes in there and kind of points up a little bit. And I want to be able to push it straight up. This is uh, this is perplexing. I think the uh, the videos that I watched, this, sh this shaft wasn't in there. They were able to just kind of stick a ratchet in there and do it that way. But uh, honestly, I mean, this is 5 eighths to 7 eighths of an inch. 7 eighths of an inch is a lot. All right, thank God for um, Walmart utensils. So what we did was we made this, uh, yeah. All right, we're at three and a half here, three and a half. Three, we, we're right there. It's in spec. Good, thank fucking God. All right, it's in spec. Jesus, Lord have mercy. Woo. All right. We're gonna button this thing up here now, finally. And then uh, one of my goals for tonight was to at least be able to put oil in one of the holes. So we're gonna be able to wrap up the um, the primary tonight, which uh, I'm pretty happy about. You guys will need to see me put all this stuff back together. So I'll turn this off here and then we'll move on to the next project. All right, boys and girls, welcome back. It is uh, the following day. I stayed up a little bit last night after I turned the camera off, put the new air filter in. Uh, big shout out to my boy Echo 5 Training uh, who provided me with that, that was very nice of you. And then I, uh, I changed the spark plugs. I suspected that the spark plugs were gonna be oil fouled. Uh, they did not appear to be oil fouled. They did show signs of excessive uh, rich running. So um, I think the air filter had a lot to do with that, but who knows, we're just gonna have to uh, play it by ear. So a couple things I wanna show you guys. Today what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna film every step. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you guys like that stuff or not, but we are gonna change the oil pan or attempt to change the oil pan. Who knows what kind of problems I may or may not run into, but it's just nine 3 16 Allen bits. I heard knock on wood sometimes they may strip out. I'm kind of nervous about that, but I did get the new oil pan in. If you guys watched my last video on this bike, um, you saw how worn out those um, drain plugs were. Completely wrong drain plugs. The holes were all bent out of shape. So brand new oil pan, still in the bag. Brand new drain plugs, straight out of the bag. Uh, interesting fun fact about these old drain plugs, they were introduced in 1965. So Harley used these for a very long time. I don't know when they converted over to the new ones, but these come with pipe dope already on it. They come with an O-ring, and there's some kind of nylon washer in here that I'm assuming is used for um, for a different model. Uh, definitely isn't for these, according to the parts fish, but uh, oil pans under there. Gotta take the dipstick out. I have opted. You guys have heard me talk about that shift pole adjustment. Uh, I'm gonna do this oil pan and then ride around to see if I think it needs a shift pole adjustment. I think one of the common concerns that leads to thinking you need a shift pole adjustment is hard to find neutral. I don't have a hard time finding neutral at all. Um, also, the bike seems to shift okay when it's not been running. So um, a lot of that tends to lead toward an improper clutch adjustment, which we did last week, um, or could be worn out clutch plates. So what I wanna do is I'm going to like I said, run it. I do have new gaskets and stuff just in case I need to get in there and take the top training cover off um, and the oil spout out, whatever. Uh, but I think I'm gonna bypass that for now and just see how it works. So I'm uh, not gonna film this. Gonna knock these out, it's nine bolts. If I run into problems, I'll let you guys know you guys can celebrate my failures with me. So we'll see you soon. All right, after only a couple of uh, very small hiccups, we got the old oil pan off. 
I'll tell you one thing that's really good to see as I'm looking in here. I don't know if you can really tell or not from the camera, but it um, doesn't look like there's any oil shave or metal shavings or anything. Uh, that's one thing I was kind of concerned about getting into this very old oil pan. I do have to take this little nipple off here and uh, and reapply it to the new one. I didn't do a good enough job of seeing if there was a uh, there was an O-ring or some pipe dope that I needed to use on here. So uh, hopefully uh, hopefully we don't do the wrong thing here. So yeah, I'm gonna get this stuff transferred over to the new one. Put those nine bolts back in. It wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. And then uh, we're gonna put new oil in. Hell yeah. All right, boys and girls, I'm at a little bit of a pausing point at the moment. Don't have my glasses on so you guys can see my uh, Louis Vuitton bags under my eyes. Uh, I've got some uh, thunder rolling in. I can hear it grumbling in the distance. Not unexpected, saw it on the radar. But uh, so the last person, I understand now, um, apparently used some sort of gasket adhesive to keep that thing on there. And uh, at first I was cursing them for putting all that on there because it took me a while to scrape all the little bits and pieces off. But then I started putting the new oil pan on and I get it. It's really hard to keep that gasket straight because uh, it's slipping and sliding in there. Plus there's a little, uh, the oil fill nozzle has an O-ring that kind of shoots up in there. So uh, once you push it up, you have no idea if you're aligned or not. So what I did, um, I've got all my bikes in here for now because I do have an appointment to get this thing registered uh, here in an hour and a half or so and I want to get everything out of the rain. So what I've done, uh, I took the little electric scooter up to AutoZone and uh, picked up some uh, gasket adhesive myself. So I've got the bolts in there kind of holding it down, keeping it lined up. I'm going to let that cure and if I can't get back to it for an hour then that's just how it is. Uh, one way or the other, we're going to have this thing running today. Um, and then I'm just going to check and see if it goes through all the gears. Fingers crossed, because I don't know if my shifter's out of whack or whatever. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. We'll see you in a bit. All right, boys and girls. What would a maintenance video be without a proper test ride? I'm going to head up to my uh, local tavern, the old Glenwood Tavern. Uh, we had a bartender there that was out for a few weeks because her and her old man got into a really bad accident. Uh, so we'll test ride it up there. I did ride it on Wednesday, so it is a little bit of a cheat. This is going to be the last ride that I do on this thing for about another week and a half. The, the, everything shifts fine. Uh, the clutch adjustment and primary chain tension check and all that and all new fluids seem to have helped. Uh, fix that problem completely. One of the things I noticed was the problem was that the jam nut for the clutch adjustment was all the way down on the loose side so that the adjuster could just move, you know, freely at will. Um, I talked a little bit in the last video about the low oil light uh, not seeming to work. I talked to a good old 1 800 Ask Shelby. Um, he had me do some things to try to ground out this uh, sending unit. And I did, and the light still didn't come on. So what we're gonna do, um, until I feel like digging with the wiring, is I actually have an oil pressure gauge coming from uh, Lowbrow Customs that I'm gonna mount up here at the top of the rocker box. But um, also Shelby taught me to uh, remove this, uh, this little plug here and check to make sure the oil squirts out. And it does, so we know we have some oil flow here. Don't mind this, I was checking the oil after the ride the other night, got some on there. Well, let's get this thing started, man. I haven't had a uh, carbureted bike since the, uh, the Goldwing. I always forget to turn the gas on. And I get down the road and uh, she's not happy. There we go, baby. I know it doesn't sound good on the uh, on the old Cena here, GoPro. So we'll... Uh, here, let's take a little video. You guys can watch me film the video that I'm going to insert. So why are we not going to ride this thing for the next week or so? Uh, if everything's running so well, which it is, uh, she's still running really rich. Got some uh, puffs of black smoke at idle especially, 
it, uh, the wife was riding behind me the other day. She said, man, that really smells like gas. I can smell fuel sometimes. Uh, so I ordered an SNS Super E Master Rebuild Kit. Um, I actually ordered a, uh, a, a high range jet kit as well. Um, that was kind of an expensive gamble. I'm not going to open it unless I get in there and see that I need them. My suspicion is that they've got the wrong jets in there. Um, too big is what I suspect. Either that or the, uh, the float is too high. I want to be straight up honest with you guys. I have never fucked with a carb. <laughs> so all these things that I'm even saying right now is from the, uh, Hours and hours of YouTube University that uh, I've consumed over the last week or so while I've been trying to troubleshoot this thing. Uh, so, the only way to know if the jets are wrong is when I get there and take it apart. Um, I have a feeling they put a bigger jet, intermediate jet, main jet. I'm not sure. So, we're going to see. Oh, I love these little roads back here, man. Yeah, we're not going too far. I just want to get out and ride it. Um, everything shifts just fine. So, thank God I didn't have to get in and adjust the shift pole. And that would look like a little bit more work uh, than I wanted to get myself into. And mostly because there are special tools to do that. And I don't have those special tools. So, I would have to modify some existing tools or find some workaround just to get the jam nut off to make uh, make those adjustments to the shift haul. If you guys are curious about that, I didn't know anything about it either. If you guys are curious about that, uh, Baker Baker Transmissions, they actually have a, a, a video out on YouTube that is detailed. They show you like the perfect camera angle so you can watch that shift haul. Yeah, this thing, man, it's so it's so tight. You know what I mean? Like the, the turning on the steering on this thing is tight. Uh, I'm sure that has a lot to do with mid controls, T bars, little bitty tires, you know, lift it up a little bit higher. It, uh, yeah, it, it, she wants to go. Now it is an 80 inch Evo, and the carb's not tuned right, so we're missing a little bit of performance, but. I'm uh, being realistic. It's an 80 inch Evo. It's not going to be, you know, a speed demon, if you will. So the Sportster I had was an Evo Sportster, and yes, it was an 883. But there is a similar engine sound, even though this is a big twin Evo. Something that I love my twin cams; they're my favorite motorcycle. But something that I kind of miss hearing. I mean, it's I don't know. It's got a different type of thump. Obviously, it's a deeper thump being an 80 inch, but. Man, this thing, I don't know, it kind of brings back some nostalgia as well as some of the new modern vibes. I dig it. I dig the bike a whole lot. And uh, all this work I'm doing, you know, you might say, oh, you bought a piece of shit. I don't think so. I mean, I, I've got I've got several hundred dollars into it after I bought it, but I, I think it's just taking care of, it's little stuff, you know, I'm not into the motor yet. Who knows what could happen? Yeah, it's just little stuff. The stuff that, that should have been monitored and worked on over the last 28 years so i'm satisfied that that she's good to go you know what i'm saying all right let's pull into ye old glenwood tavern good news taco trucks open too it's my favorite taco shop yeah we're gonna get some tacos and some beer it's a good day all right, nieces and nephews, that's going to wrap this video up. I've got my garage kind of configured for my uh, first MFG uh, film shoot. But, uh, yeah, we're going to end it here. Uh, we still got a little bit of work to do on the Dyna. In fact, inside, right inside the door, I've got a carburetor rebuild kit. Uh, I've got a jet kit. I've got new intake seals, and I've got an oil pressure gauge. Uh, we're going to do all that stuff. I wanted to get it done this weekend. It's Sunday, early afternoon. Maybe I'll get it done today. Maybe I won't. But I do appreciate you coming along for this video and all videos. And until next time, we'll see you later.